Anti-government protesters returned to the streets of Lebanon after a three-month pause triggered by a nationwide lockdown in, in place due to COVID-19. Hundreds of protesters flooded the Smarter Square in central Beirut, leading to violent clashes with security forces. Tear gas and rubber bullets were used to disperse the demonstrators who were protesting the collapse of the country's economy. Protesters hurled stones at the security forces. They torched vehicles and ransacked shops to send their message across for economic reforms. They're demanding jobs, medical care, the right to education and other basic human rights. The protests first erupted back in October 2019 and led to a new government under Prime Minister Hassan Diab. But many feel that the new government has been equally inept in handling the crisis. Around 50 people were injured in Saturday's protests. 11 of them have been hospitalized according to the Lebanese Red Cross. Some protesters were seen wearing masks to protect themselves from the COVID-19 infection. The pandemic has in fact exposed the inefficiency of Lebanon's health system. Clashes also broke out between opponents and supporters of the Hezbollah, which holds considerable clout in the country. Hezbollah is the only group to have retained their weapons despite the end of the civil war back in the 1990s. Some protesters feel that only the state must have the authority to stockpile weapons. At one point, security forces had to make a human chain to separate pro and anti Hezbollah factions. Lebanon's economy has taken a turn for the worse in the last few months. The currency has lost almost half of its value and banks have started refusing dollar withdrawals. More than 35% of the population is unemployed and 45% are below the poverty line. The country's debt has soared to almost 170% of the GDP. The government is currently negotiating with the International Monetary Fund for billions of dollars in aid. Thousands of Israelis rallied in Israel's Tel Aviv against the government's plans to annex parts of the occupied West Bank. Demonstrators were seen waving Israeli and Palestinian flags and holding placards which said, Palestinian lives matter. Now, these protests uh, were originally forbidden by the police due to fears over the coronavirus, but were later given a green light. That we have done so much damage to each other, the Palestinians and the, the Jews in Israel. We are brothers. We belong here, both of us. And we can do so much more together than separately.
U.S. President Donald Trump's controversial Middle East peace plan allows Israel to annex Jewish settlements and other strategic territory in the West Bank. In a recent agreement to form a coalition government with Benny Gantz, Prime Minister Netanyahu will submit the Middle East plan to the Israeli parliament soon for possible endorsement.